Hello. Uh, I am now officially on a, a break, which doesn't mean say I won't be doing any work, but um, I'm, uh, time is more my own. And so I thought I would uh, venture on a series of videos that have um, been brewing up in my mind, the subject of which is horary astrology. And um, particularly in, because I was doing chants in relation to Boris Johnson previously and the, the government and various votes and so on. And you, you can see that there's been two uh, uh, recent RAs. One was about a month and a half ago about uh, when will Theresa May resign. Uh, I didn't expect the chart to be valid uh, for that, but it was, and it turned out to be so. Uh, we worked that out. It was in one of my London School of Astrology classes on horary. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, July the 20th of this year, I received out of the blue uh, somebody that I hadn't heard of for ooh, nine months or maybe. And um, he called me up and asked me this question. And the question was, uh, will we be leaving on the 30th? Will, we, yeah, will we be Brexiting on the 31st of August? And I naturally, I took down a note of the time and the uh, place and so on and mm -hmm. set up a chart. Mm -hmm. Well, this chart is a curious one and um, it represents some rather uh, challenging and uh, mystifying elements to it, which takes us into a branch of astrology, horror astrology, one of the most mysterious elements of the, um, of the astrological um, uh, universe. Uh, as you know, astrology can be applied to almost anything to do with business or finance, or, um, job selection, um, you know, uh, psychological analysis and work development, mundane astrology, political making predictions in some instances um, for entertainment purposes. And not, not to knock that because astrology can be used to, to mystify or in, in, in some way represent it in a collective sense. Unfortunately, when the critics get their eye on it, they, they think that all there is to astrology are uh, mere sun sign columns, as if the signs are simply character traits so that we all possess, which is utter nonsense. Uh, because as we know, the signs represent a kind of energy pattern, um, and uh, it is that that we're destined to express. Uh, and you can see that in the behavior of a person. You can see signs, let's say a sun sign in, um, in what they do. You can see the essence of it. And the essence of it is that along the line of their life, this central pattern of the sun sign is coordinates all the rest. It's the thing which makes most sense and leads us to our connection with life. If we're not doing our sun sign or experiencing it enough, uh, then what happens is we, we fade a bit in our sense of well-being. Uh, depression can come upon us if we're not doing it because we have to, our life force, the sun, is an expression of that dynamic energy that the sign represents. It's as if it uses us. Now, I know this is a rather transpersonal view of astrology, and but the, along that line, there's a many, many spectrums upon which one can interpret this. Um, so that's partly of the astrology that, that we know. Um, but horary astrology is that which is usually concealed from public view. And I've been an honorary astrologer for a long time, and um, what it is, seems to involve is some form of divination that the setting up of a chart uh, takes us into a, 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 a semi-liminal um, state or a liminal state of some kind, or where in our mind and imagination, as it, as it fits in with the chart, as we follow it through, it starts to tell us things uh, um, as if from their intelligences from other sources. Um, uh, it's quite a, a peculiar kind of communion, I suppose, that one has to have. The mind of the astrologer melds in some way with, with the chart. This is improper, already. And then the chart begins to reveal its, its uh, divinatory significance. Uh, by divination, what I mean is a call upon the celestial patterns to, um, to try and inform us of something. Um, such things can lead to a, a certain kind of future. Um, it, it seems that Orrery sometimes does predict things, but that's not the line of it. What it is, uh, 
A divination is a calling upon how we can participate in the outcome of, the, of our question or, or, or certain actions to be taken. So it's a form of guidance. I mean, if people ask about missing items, which is a common thing in honorary astrology, then the person still has to get up and move around in accordance with the instructions and to try and find it. You see, so honorary astrology doesn't predict what you will do. It, it, it just shows the, the Tao of the moment, I suppose, the special conditions, the, the patterns inherent in, in, the, in the situation. And so the, the orrery chart comes into being, the question becomes a drama, which is then um, uh, portrayed and shown within the orrery chart itself. Now there are all manner of techniques and things and procedures that happen in orrery in order for one not to get lost and just make up the whole thing. There is an objective element to it. There's certain procedures that we follow in order to move further and further into, into the chart until it makes sense. These procedures run roughly in line with five steps. First is determining whether it's a course for uh, horary, whether it's a question for horary. The second is um, the cautions or considerations before judgment. And in other words, sometimes the chart says, no, you shouldn't be using astrology to do this, or um, some of the information is wrong or whatever. It has a way of telling you things before you get further into the chart. Cautions and considerations, however, are not stipulations against judgment. Sometimes they're strong, or if there's one or two too many, and the indications like that, you should steer clear of trying to uh, perceive or, or, or view uh, life through the chart. Uh, but the, after the course and considerations comes this location of significators. And well, the location of significators is about finding which planets uh, and which houses uh, of the chart um, are are going to play the prominent role in the drama. Certain planets are chosen as rulers of houses or placements in houses, and these become the main actors of the drama. These become the primary significators of the person asking the question and also what the question is about. It's called the quesited. The quesited is what you're asking about and is usually found by uh, the ruler of one of the houses of the horoscope. But this branch, this, this part uh, of, of it is very significant because it depends on radicality. And radicality and signification are virtually the same thing. So radicality means can the, is the chart portraying the drama of the question in it? Can you rely upon what you're looking at? Or does it doesn't seem to have any significance at all? And so if the astrologer is unable to see things within the uh, horoscope, to, 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 to spot where they are dramatized within the uh, astrological alphabet, where, and the drama of the movement of the planets shows often the movement of the event in, in the future. And it can sometimes tell about what's gone in the past by previous um, uh, aspects, especially to the moon. So we have, here we have a, a live drama and it's for us to, um, so say blend our mind and move into the chart to try and make sense of it and once certain features of the chart strike you and there's a the beginning of a, a, a buzz or an excitement that this orrery this uh, oracle if you like that you've you've drawn and you're or you're you're seeing into it in a mystical fashion although there are techniques for doing so um set procedures and techniques for doing this uh, and ways of doing it what happens is that then the the, the they become significators. They become alive and rich with meaning that is totally relevant to the question. Once you reach that stage, then you look to see the outcome of the matter. Um, outcomes could be yes or no, or this is going to happen, or uh, and so on. And sometimes the timing is shown by the perfection of aspects or aspects to come, future aspects to come, or to, 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 to perfect, if you like, to become absolute. Those are future times. The previous aspects show you what's going on in the past or key significant moments. The ascendant is particularly important in any orrery because 
uh, unless that ascendancy that describes the querent or the question or has some some relevance it's as if the birth of the question is just come up above the ascendant if it has no association or no meaning whatsoever you usually can't rely upon the chart much um, the ascendant has to be more than uh, more than three degrees otherwise this often represents a, a weak element uh, it's as if the question um, this is too early to say or the the person has been drawn to ask it not quite in the right circumstances now if if the ascendant is more than 27 well it may be too late to say in other words any divination or any answer may not change anything and so it becomes rather futile to do it's at the end of its course it's the end of a sign when it's 27 to uh, 29 uh, uh, 59 degrees so what we have here then is an oracle that we draw upon and orrery is that special connection if you like of uh, not just interpretation but seeing into and realizing uh, the drama of the question within the placements of the horoscope that's that's a general or rough guide to what horary astrology is so uh, it brings us to another question however uh, what on earth is the use of finding out whether we will leave through orary astrology? Now, um, sometimes uh, orary astrology itself has a way of saying "butt out, uh, uh, don't enter into this, um, uh, don't enter into this." Uh, it's not for us to say. In other words, I believe orary astrology is its own internal uh, uh, police force that uh, says no or yes. People that move through this police force often get into trouble. In other words, they try to interpret chance uh, or they their, their subjectivity is so uh, intent on a specific answer. They're not objective enough to the chart. In, 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 and so they tend to see it or twist it to their own uh, point of view. This is never more the case when you ask questions of yourself um, because uh, there may be subjective biases and you, you choose pieces of symbolism against other, other forms of symbolism. It becomes difficult to uh, move through it objectively and you, one psychism that inevitably takes place. Is it objective or is it co coloured by your own? Um, uh, is it coloured too much, if you like, by your own background and motivation? Or, or, or decisions of, uh, of, pati of particular biases of one kind or another. That's important to get that out. So, um, so what are we doing, if you like, uh, having a look at this? Well, in questions such as these, when I don't know, I usually set up the chart and then it tells me whether something is up here, whether one should go ahead with the question or not. And in this particular case, about Brexit on the October the 31st, it is true that this chart seems all very solidly um, and startlingly so a valid chart. And if it is a valid chart, then can we rely upon it to tell us what the patterns are and what are the, the events likely to occur along a particular line? Uh, what, are, what, what does, what does um, uh, say astrology have to say about the future of such events? In other words, once we get past the fact that the chart's valid, that it's radical, it can be fit to be judged, we find the significators. If those significators uh, tell us the people in the event, you know, the uh, England and Boris Johnson and the EU and so on, and we will we'll find these in the chart, um, then we can take those to be absolutely valid and so therefore tell us something about uh, what's going on and how to how 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 times arrow through the progressions of those uh, aspects in the chart will move towards an inevitable um, astrological pattern. That astrological pattern will symbolically represent the outcome of the event or question. So I'm going to enter, as I usually have done for most of my Vinto videos, into an experiment, and it's an experiment to find out whether these ancient rules of honorary astrology um, are indeed valid, whether astrology at all is valid. This isn't supposed to prove its validity. It's just an experiment in the old traditions. 
the, in other words, anybody can be uh, fallible. This isn't a question of whether it turns out rightly or wrongly. It's an inquiry into the very processes and um, uh, techniques and uh, things with, with, with our re-astrology and explore them together to see whether my particular take on them, which is, could be fallible, but nevertheless, we're, we're move with my particular judgment in these things and uh, my my knowledge or lack of it and we shall see and then i will move with that and see if in here in a public view whether following this the right technical kind of astrology through and to seeing it's inevitable end whether indeed our astrology still has something to say still whether we can rely upon it still to, to see whether it's knowledge system and its claims which is to be able to on occasion divine elements of of the um of a situation and we will see whether those claims uh, can be um, at least explored in, a, in an experimental way so the next let's say uh, maybe three or four videos will be taken up exploring horror astrology through this particular chart showing you the techniques and processes and the systems uh, the the uh, attitude of thought and the way the the chart weaves its uh, picture it begins to it, it reveal its picture anyway these are the things that i hope to explore in these next few uh, videos uh, particularly on a subject so dear to all our hearts brexit